This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1070, All the Things You Don't Need, by Chris Gillibo of chrisgillibo.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your host, your narrator, and your old friend. If you're listening to me every single day, then I do consider you an old friend. And old stands for Optimal Living Daily, which is convenient. Before we get to the post, are you focusing on the most meaningful things in life? Take inspiration from Skagen watches and jewelry. Their Danish minimalist designs are guided by less is more, a good daily reminder for all of us. See how they do it at skagen.com, that's S-K-A-G-E-N.com, and get a special discount on your first purchase when you sign up for emails. Again, that's skagen, S-K-A-G-E-N.com. For now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. All the Things You Don't Need by Chris Gillibo of chrisgillibo.com. Have you seen the site Unnecessary Quotes? It's fabulously sarcastic, offering a collection of signs that have quotation marks in all the wrong places. I started thinking about other unnecessary things after a few people asked about my language skills for traveling. You can't be a world traveler without speaking six languages, right? Surprise, I'm not a language ninja. I speak bad French and awful Spanish. Otherwise, I'm definitely not the guy you want to have around as a translator. Airport codes and frequent flyer info, yes. Translation at the next UN meeting, no. It's not that I think everyone should speak English or that learning other languages is unimportant. If I had kids, I'd put them in Chinese school in the morning with a Spanish-speaking nanny in the afternoon. But you know what? Even though I'd happily accept the gift of magic language skills, I also know that my inability to cross most language barriers doesn't really hinder me from going anywhere or doing anything. You don't need to be a language ninja to travel. Sometimes it'll be awkward and sometimes it'll be funny, but your chances of starving to death on the road are quite low. If I could only... Focusing on something you don't have but think you need can be a dangerous, common pattern. The pattern is to identify something you lack and use that as an obstacle that prevents you from doing what you really want. With an obstacle identified, we feel better. No harm done, right? No harm except that nagging sense in the back of our brain that we really should be doing something differently. Not to worry, most people come to terms with it over time. Fortunately, many of the obstacles we perceive are not really obstacles. Many of the things we think we need are unnecessary. I don't mean to discount handicaps, social disadvantage, etc., but the way out of most challenges was best defined by Oprah. Quote, we are each responsible for our own life. No other person is or even can be, end quote. Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in a prison cell on Robben Island. He got out and led South Africa on a path of forgiveness and transition. Viktor Frankl created a philosophy on finding personal meaning while imprisoned in a concentration camp. When I think about people like that, I become less tolerant of other excuses. If you can emotionally thrive in prison, even more things become unnecessary. Let's look at a few of them. You don't need experience. Experience can sometimes get you in the door, but what really matters is what you're doing now. The past belongs on a resume. The future is only partially in your hands. Today is the only day we are fully in control of. You don't need a mentor. No one will ever be as invested in your success as you. You can't outsource the responsibility for planning the course of your life. You don't need paperwork. Paperwork includes degrees, certificates, endorsements, licenses, recommendations, referrals, and so on. Please note, it's not that some of these things or the other things are unhelpful, it's that they are unnecessary. You don't need to pay for access or information. I realize the irony, I sell information products on the right side of my website, but if you wanna break things down to the simplest level, almost all information is freely available. If you live in Iran or China, some information may be kept from your view. Everywhere else, whatever it is you want to learn, go and learn it. If you have no money, go to the library. Go to the bookstore and read books in the cafe. You don't need other people's permission. If you've heard the one about forgiveness and permission, how it's easier to say, oops, sorry, than it is to get something cleared in advance, this is totally true. This principal helped me finish college in two years and sneak into graduate school without taking the GRE. It certainly wasn't high intelligence or aptitude for study. However, you also don't need permission for much of anything. You don't need permission to be happy, for example. Just be happy. Where's the line? 
The line is where your actions cause harm to someone else. My view is that as long as you stay behind that line, you don't need permission. Thankfully, I don't know many people who want to intentionally harm someone else. We just want freedom to pursue our own choices without being held back by anyone else. What you really need. If you don't need most of those things, what do you need? You need passion. You need to be absolutely passionate about what you believe in. If you don't feel passionate about something, chances are you haven't discovered it yet. Keep looking. You need a vision and a task. The vision tells you where you are going. The task tells you what to do next. You need the two answers. What do you really want to get out of life? How can you help others in a way that is unique to you? You need commitment to stay the course. Most people give up at 5,000 hours. The winners continue to 10,000 and beyond. I like what Seth said about the 3,000 posts he's written, the first 2,500 were the hardest. Very important, what's the difference between the things you need and the things you don't need? All of the things in the first category are up to you. Most of the things in the second category come from other people. Mostly, you need enough. You need enough money, enough time, enough courage. What is enough? That's for you to decide. But don't worry about what you don't have. When you let go of all the things you don't need, a lot of other things become much easier. You just listened to the post titled All the Things You Don't Need by Chris Gillibo of chrisgillibo.com. Thank you to Skagen for sponsoring this episode. Did you know some of the happiest people on earth live in Denmark? Skagen is not only named after a Danish coastal town, but it's also inspired by the people who live there. Their Danish lifestyle focuses on what's meaningful, like being part of a community, making time for relationships, and living in the moment. Skagen connects the dots between culture and design with minimalist watches and jewelry that reflect the less is more concept. And I have a Skagen smartwatch. It tracks my heart rate, activity, it has smartphone notifications, music control with storage, and a lot more. You can even make payments from it. It has customizable dials and magnetic mesh straps. It's a really beautiful watch, and the straps are interchangeable. Come check it out along with their other watches and jewelry. Visit skagen.com, that's S-K-A-G-E-N.com, and you can get a special discount on your first purchase when you sign up for emails. Again, that's skagen, S-K-A-G-E-N.com. And that should do it for today's episode. Thank you for being here and listening all the way through. It really means a lot. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you in the Friday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.